Welcome to your second rhetorical strength lesson. Uh, this time we'll be talking about refining your rhetoric by your ability to recognize and hopefully also use parallel structures uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, just like with all of these other lessons, this lesson is adapted from our textbook and you can always find more information on uh, it from the textbook by looking at pages 384 to 391. Um, but hopefully you'll get most of that information here. This is a pretty quick lesson. It's only one slide. So let's get started. So let's just start with the book's definition of, uh, of parallelism. So we can, uh, we can see that the book says that sentences or parts of a sentence are parallel when structures within them take the same form. Parallelism is important at the level of words, phrases, and clauses. Uh, so as we go up the line, we'll talk about each uh, and they'll get more complicated. Now, we'll start with words and I just wanna give you a heads up. Remember that, you know, we can just talk about parallel parallel structure as something that happens and that, that people do. And sometimes there will be parallel structure and there won't be a lot of rhetorical choice or meaning behind it. And other times there will be uh, more rhetorical choice and meaning behind it. And you should be thinking um, when you use parallel structure, more along the lines of why am I doing this? Uh, and is, is there a purpose to, to the fact that I'm using parallel structure here? Is it, is it increasing my ethos, my pathos, my logos? You know, is it, is it helping me prove my point or make my argument stronger or am I just doing it? Now, um, in the case of words, um, probably that's the hardest, you know, this making a rhetorical decision to use parallel structure is, is the hardest with words. So let's look at an example of, of parallel structure with words. Uh, we've got this sentence here, Star Wars can, can indeed be funny and philosophical, and it simply is parallel because uh, the two words are both adjectives. Um, so some of you might be looking at this and saying, well, Mr. Lassard, that's that's just a list, it's a list of adjectives, and, and that's true. It is just a list of adjectives, um, but technically a list of any type of word. Uh, so a list of adjectives, a list of nouns, a list of adverbs, it, it, it's parallel simply because, you know, the structure of the word is taking the same form. Um, so just, you, you know, it's, it's good to note that um, this is still an example of parallel structure, although it's one that isn't necessarily, you know, rhetorically strong so much as it just is parallel. Um, what, what some people may pick out as, as strengthening it rhetorically a little bit is the fact that they're alliterative words. So not only is it, um, structurally parallel, but it's also alliterative, giving it a little bit more emphasis on what Star Wars can be. Um, but you know, this wouldn't be a strong example of parallel structure. It wouldn't be one that you would want to pick out as like, wow, that's, that's really impressive. It just is parallel structure. If we move up to phrases, we can start to see how uh, rhetorical choices can can be made that help to emphasize a point and to bring certain things out. <clears throat> so something that you probably want to write down if you don't know this off the top of your head first is that a phrase is a group of words that does not include a noun and a verb. In other words, a phrase cannot stand alone as its own sentence. Um, so, you know, you have to, if it's missing a verb, you'd have to add a noun. If it's missing a, a noun, you'd have to have, add a verb in order to make it a complete sentence. Uh, so let's look at an example now of parallel phrasing. We've got this sentence. The original genius of Star Wars stemmed from the fact that there was no time frame, but for a long time ago, no place, but for a galaxy far, far away, and no expectation, but for wonder and awe. So in this case, I've highlighted, as I did in the last one, in purple, uh, the the phrase that we're looking at, no time frame but for, no place but for, no expectation but for. 
and essentially what we have are three nouns preceded by no and followed by but four. So our nouns are time frame, place, and expectation, but we've added the no before each and the but for after to, to turn it into a phrase and not just you know, a par parallel, um, parallel structure using simply words. Of course, if I was if I was to say no time frame but for and not fill in that sentence, fill in the blank after that, then we would not end up having, you know, uh, any complete sentence. But each of these phrases is dependent upon what becomes what comes before it and what comes after it. So, uh, you know, it still would not be a complete sentence, even with the beginning, the original genus of Star Wars stemmed from the fact that there was no time frame, but for, you know, you still have to add that, add that, the end of that sentence there. However, what's nice about this, and what makes it a, a nice use, in my opinion, of uh, parallel phrasing, is that we don't have to repeat the beginning, right? So we only have to say the beginning of the sentence once, the original genus of Star Wars stemmed from the fact that there was and then we can go from there with the parallel structure, no time frame, but for a long time ago, um, yada, yada, yada. Or if you didn't want to use parallel structure, you complete the sentence in any one of those three ways. So what we've got is the parallel structure emphasizing what Star Wars lacked in traditionality, in traditional terms, no time frame, no place, no expectation, uh, in order to bring out the newness of what Star Wars was at the time. So it functions rhetorically to emphasize the lack and of of tradition and bring out the the newness of of the genre. Uh, the final way that we can be uh, that we can use and recognize parallel structure is through clauses. So the difference between a phrase and a clause is that a clause uses a noun and a verb. Uh, so technically, usually a clause can stand alone as its own sentence. Although we do have two different types of clauses, we've got dependent clauses and independent clauses. So a dependent clause would use a noun and a verb. However, uh, it's dependent upon what, what comes before or after it to make it a complete sentence. An independent clause uses a noun and a verb and could stand alone as its own sentence. It's, it's not dependent upon what comes before and after it to make it a complete sentence. So let's look at two examples. First one will have dependent clauses in it. Uh, this one says, Star Wars fans bask in the sandbox of limitless cultures and technologies in the sense that only limitation, uh, that the only limitation is that of their imagination. So these are dependent clauses because, because of the, of the in the, uh, um, you know, we, it could be Star Wars fast, fans bask and that could be its own sentence, but it doesn't make a ton of sense. So we need the in the, uh, and the in the is actually the only part of the second, uh, the, the second part of the sentence that is parallel because it calls back to the first part of the clause. So Star Wars fans bask in the sandbox of limitless cultures and technologies in the sense that the only limitation is that of their Im imagination. It's the parallelism of the in the part of the clause that allows us to to um, to call back to the original and complete the sentence in two different ways. So in this case, it's it's emphasizing what Star Wars fans really enjoy about um, uh, about the franchise. Uh, so just to to sum up, it, dependent clauses. We've got two parallel dependent clauses beginning with Star Wars fans bask in the, and then the Star Wars fans bask is the implied part in the second part. Um, of the parallel structure. The, the second example uh, reads, to enjoy Star Wars, give yourself over to your imagination. To lose its magic, give yourself over to reality and drudgery. So this is the most complex uh, um, example that we'll be looking at because it uses both uh, dependent and independent clauses in order to make the the phrase the to make the entire sentence um, parallel so we can see that we've got two essentially it's two sentences that are parallel um, although i've made it one sentence by instead of using a period i've used a semicolon uh, and then it 
it's a dependent independent clause construction. So to enjoy Star Wars, you've got the verb and the noun, but it's an incomplete sentence. It's you know you couldn't say that. Uh, we need the the independent clause to to finish it. Uh, give yourself over to imagination. That's independent. That could be its own sentence on on its own, but it's it's finishing the thought for the dependent clause before it. And the second sentence does the same thing. So you've got to lose its magic. Again, dependent. It's not a complete sentence. Give yourself over to reality and drudgery. That's a complete sentence. Um, but it's made more complex by the dependent clause that comes before it. So essentially what makes it parallel is the dependent independent. The dependent clause followed by the independent clause. So to enjoy, give yourself over to. To lose, give yourself over to. Uh, and it emphasize, it helps to emphasize um, uh, you know, one over the other. It gives it 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 gives the reader basically a false choice, right? Like who, who's who's gonna want to lose magic rather than enjoy something? Uh, so the the parallel structure really emphasizes the first part of the sentence over the second part of the sentence. So you really want to be thinking about all of these things as you're writing. You know, it's not as simple as just saying, well, I'm going to use parallel structure here because, but what kind of parallel structure am I going to use? And how does that parallel structure emphasize what I'm trying to bring out in my writing? Sorry for being long winded, but these things are always more complicated than they seem to be on the surface. So I hope you get something out of this. Now let's see how you can do with it.